so the agenda for us will be the introduction to ch that what is ch what you will learn in ch then we'll be moving on to the exam details and then we'll be moving on to the why the demand of ch is increasing what different is there in ch so that everyone is looking for a ch certified person in that in their organization then after that we have a challenge uh, capture the flag challenge so we'll be solving that so before solving that we'll be going through some of the things some of the steps that we should take before solving any of the challenge any of the machine that we get right so now the first thing that we have is ceh what is ceh right so what do you guys know about ch so you guys can put your uh, answers in the chat and if you have any questions those questions will be also in the chat right so what do you think go to ch Now guys, as you can see, CH stands for Certified Ethical Hacker. Now Certified Ethical Hacker is what? This is course provided by EC Council, right? Now in this course, so do we have? We have different things. So before moving on to the introduction of CH, let me tell you about the cyber security guys see we have a thing which we call cyber security right now what do you guys know about cyber security what do you understand when i say the word cyber security okay protecting of cia Great. So all the resources that are there in our cyberspace, right? We are trying to secure them, right? Cyberspace means all the things that are digital, right? That are accessed using internet. So we are what trying, we are trying to save them from the attackers so that our information or our data should be secure right now in this there comes one more thing information security now what do you understand by information security then anyone information security what do you think guys now what happens is you guys might have learned about set right if you are a mathematics student you might have heard about set if not let me tell you there is a set let's say we have a set of characters so we'll write it like this a b c d e right like this we have a set of numbers so we'll write it like this one two three four five right now let's say this is a set right now let's expand the set again let's write all the numbers from zero to nine so zero one two three four five six seven eight nine now these are all the numbers that are used in a set so we can call this as a universal set right now 
if we are calling this a universal set so if i take only one two three four so these are one two th are you sharing your screen we can see only one screen yeah i'm writing on the same screen if you can okay. see sure yeah. so if i'm writing let's say one two three four right so our universal set was zero to nine and these one two three four are the part of that particular set so we will call this universal set and the set that came from universal set that is a part of universal set this will be called as subset right now same with the security guys your cyber security is a subset of information security right so this is your information security in this this you can call a universal set so your cyber security is a subset of information security so in cyber security what we do we only save the cyber space the digital things that are connected to the internet but information security is securing every information that is there right every information like let's say we have any information in documents as well right we are not connected to the internet but somewhere in some organization there are some documents as well right so documentation is there so we have to secure them as well what if someone uh, like gets inside your organization and take those documents so that will not be inside cyber security it will be inside your information security right so we have different physical security controls for that like we have locks we have security guards we have cctv cameras right so that is information security right now there are two parts of security right two sides you can say one is offensive the other one is defensive right now what do you understand by offensive and defensive offensive is like you know to create a crime or something and defensive is to protect yourself great so offensive is what offensive side is the red teamos heard of red teamos people who do the attacking part right not the unauthorized attacking but they do the attacking they are working as a penetration testers in the organization and they do the attacking part right they find out vulnerabilities they exploit them then they report those vulnerabilities right that is what that is offensive side the red team also, right now in defensive side what we have we have blue team right now in blue team these are the people who defend the place defend the organization right so these are defensive peoples they find out patches they put different type of security controls so that the information will not be breached the security will not be breached the data will remain safe right so those are the defensive peoples that is defensive side blue team now if we talk about ch so ch is your offensive course right and it is 100% network offensive so using network how can we get inside any place any application or how can we uh, like hack into any organization we'll learn about that 
now one more thing about ch is it is an entry level certification if you want to start your career into cyber security and you are interested into like offensive side you want to learn that how to attack how to find out vulnerabilities right so that this is the best start for that person right so that is about ch entry level course right now right now we are having the version 11 of ch so we are having uh, we are learning about the version 11 and the thing is in version 11 there are different things that we'll learn so let's see what are the modules in that so this is the ashish i have a question line. ashish i'm sorry yep. to interrupt i have a question so in case somebody wants to be learn about the defensive type of security like the blue team so what are the courses for that because i, I was be basically safe. looking for uh you know to be uh to be on the you know uh, i'm glad you explained it because i did not know that you know there are two things offensive and defensive i heard about the red and blue teams but i was not sure about what it is so if so i'm more into learning into defensive so what are those courses yeah i will be telling that as well don't worry so for defensive side we have like a security plus course right so security plus is also there for learning about the defensive side if you want to start your career into defensive side right okay okay sure yeah now what we have guys offensive side now why we need to know now everyone why everyone needs to know about offensive side because the thing is guys let's say you are a blue teamer you are you went to an organization you took interview so in that interview the questions will not be only of the defensive side first you should know about the attacks right that if there is an attack then you can find a patch for it if you are not able to understand the attack that how the attack is happening will you be able to get that what kind of patch i have to put what kind of access controls or security controls i have to put no right so that's why the knowledge of basic attacks that in different domains should be there so that's why how ch is arranged we have 20 modules in ch first in the first module we have introduction to ethical hacking so in this what is ethical hacking what is penetration testing what is vulnerability assessment and what kinds of methodologies that we use we'll learn about that now the second module says footprinting and reconnaissance so this is the main part right if you want to find out a vulnerability first you should know about the organization let's say nowadays uh, lots of vulnerabilities are uh, found in different companies like uh, in nvidia was also hacked recently right and ddos amplification attacks are going on recently nowadays so first what attackers are doing they are finding out the information so first you should know about the organization the information what web server they are using if they are able to find out any ip address right so these kinds of things so that is reconnaissance right then we have scanning the networks now in this module we'll learn that how if we are able to find out any ip let's say so how to scan that what are the different tools that we have to scan the network and find out the information that will help us to take our next step right next we have is enumeration now enumeration is next phase so we'll discuss about that now in enumeration what we do we communicate with the target and we try to find out if there are any usernames or any of the hints present any information regarding the machine or the target organization 
then we have vulnerability analysis now in vulnerability analysis so there are two things guys penetration testing and vulnerability assessment or analysis so what do you understand by penetration testing and vulnerability analysis anyone Yeah. Can you hear me? Pen test, pen test is like uh, you know, <clears throat> is like a, like you, uh, like perform to evaluate the security of the system. Vulnerability, okay. vulnerability. Basically, sorry to interrupt. Vulnerability analysis is like uh, basically. Analyzing our network whether it is vulnerable to the attacks, something like that. Any like uh, open loops are there? Any like uh, security patches are not updated? This kind of things we'll call as a vulnerability analysis. I'm right, sir. All right. So yeah. in vulnerability assessment, what we do, guys, we find out the vulnerability only. Right. We find the vulnerability, but we do not exploit it. right so that is vulnerability assessment now penetration testing penetration testing is finding out the vulnerability and exploiting that vulnerability so that we can see what scope it has like if we have a small vulnerability and it is taking me to a server let's say right so that small vulnerability we in vulnerability assessment have found that it is a small vulnerability but the impact of that small vulnerability was that it was taking me to the main server of the organization so i can just take data from that and i can delete the whole data for the organization right so that is penetration testing finding out what impact it will do to the organization there can be a big vulnerability having small impact right so that is a different thing that about the impact of the impact is higher then will uh, put uh, will do the risk assessment then put the patches so that is a different thing but penetration testing is there to find out the scope and find out how much disaster it can lead for to our organization right so that is your vulnerability analysis then system hacking now module 6 system hacking tells us that how we can attack the system how we can find out exploits or we can write our own exploits to uh, for that vulnerability that we found so how we will exploit that vulnerability right next we have like module 7 says malware and threats so malware and threats we have like what are the malwares different kinds of malwares how you can like we have viruses we have worms we have root kits how they work and how to use them how to encode them right so what we have let's say i want that if there is any system i'm doing what i'm i'm having a virus i'm sending that virus to a system now what that system is having that system is having a particular let's say antivirus or we we have windows defender nowadays so it will detect that there is a malware has been detected right so how to bypass those inline defenses in between as well so how we can encode the wire malwares how we can obfuscate the malwares that is what is your malware threats right next we have a sniffing now can anyone tell me about sniffing what is sniffing so sniffing may be like you know packet sniffing wherein you know when the uh, when the data packets are passing through your network you are able to basically analyze those data packets great so let's say two guys are uh, communicating with each other like this is pc1 and this is pc2 these both of guys are communicating with each other 
so what they are doing they are just communicating with each other but there is a hacker in between and this hacker is doing what he's sniffing the data in between he's sniffing the network correct divyan this is man in the middle so there is a man in the middle who is sniffing the network he's taking care he's having all the traffic that is going through uh, from one person to other right so he has every traffic and he is able to retrieve the information from those packets right so that is sniffing so we'll learn about that as well next we have social engineering so in social engineering we have social engineering attacks like we have phishing smishing wishing farming shoulder surfing different kinds of attacks that how without or with the use of their convincing powers or convincing skills a social engineer gets the information from you like you might have got uh, text messages in your mobile phones right that you have won a lottery of this much amount to claim that click on this link right so that is what that is social engineering right so we'll learn about that as well next we have denial of service now in denial of service guys it is an attack dos attack which we call in short now dos is what denial of service in this we try to bring down the server so if i want to bring down any server so i will send big packets right a huge amount of data i will give to that server so that the bandwidth of the server will be depleted right and if the bandwidth is depleted and if a normal user arrives so that the server will reply that server is unavailable right so that it will deny that person from giving services that is denial of service attack session hijacking now let's say you are uh, you, everyone uses facebook nowadays right facebook instagram or social media platforms so what you have you have a session running between you and the server of that facebook so session how to hijack that session right how to get the access of that particular session in your hands how to get control of that session that is session hijacking evading ideas firewalls honeypot how to get through firewalls because we have firewalls in the organizations and everyone knows that these are the security controls that are there ids ips firewalls so if i will send any malicious thing to an organization my malicious thing will be dropped it will throw out right so it will throw out my malicious packet my intention will not be done right so what we have to do we have to find a way that how we can go through those firewalls how we can bypass those firewalls and the defenses right next we have is hacking web servers so and hacking web applications so in this we will learn about the OWASP, open web application security projects that what are the different attacks that are going on nowadays the top 10 attacks what what top 10 attacks were there three years back so that we should know that how the attackers are going through that right how the attackers are finding out the information right and attacking the web applications so that is web servers now this is what this is about web servers a part of this is here sql injection structured query language we have so if any website is using sql structured query language uh, and sql database in the back end so we use sql injection we try to find out any vulnerability that there we can write our queries of sql language and we find out information from that right 
so we'll learn how to perform sql injection in some of the websites right some of like uh, testing websites we have so in those testing websites we will learn about sql injection hacking wireless networks now many of the things are going wireless so what we will do we will learn about the wireless things right that in wireless how the what are the things what are the protocols that are being used like we are using w we started from wep then wpa wpa2 wpa3 right so what are the different vulnerabilities in those wireless networks and how we can attack them right if you are right now you are connected to your internet be it your mobile phones internet or be it your routers internet right so there is a place in between where we can take advantage of right we can register ourselves to your router right and then we can be the legit user of your router without any password right so these kinds of things will be learning in wireless networks next we have is hacking mobile platforms now if we talk about hacking mobile platforms guys so in hacking mobile platforms you have different mobile platforms like you have android ios most of these are uh, going on nowadays but back in the old days we had blackberries right we have Symbian, we have uh, Kai OS, right? So, how to attack a mobile platform? So, if you want to go for like a mobile penetration testing, so how how you can find out any vulnerability in a mobile? Like I have a mobile phone, it's locked. So, will you be able to get inside it? No, because you will you don't know the password. But if in the interface if there is any vulnerability which lets you bypass that particular screen of where to enter the password right so that is a vulnerability so that we will learn that how to hack into the android and ios and different kinds of things what are the different attack vectors what are the different uh, attack situations that we get in mobile right then we have iot hacking now in iot guys nowadays everyone is having a iot device yes or no are you guys having any iot device like you might be uh, wearing a fitbit or a smartwatch right or you might be having a, a bulb right a smart bulb right so that is what that those are iot devices internet of things right so we will try to uh, understand that what are the different risks in iot and how uh, what are the things that we can exploit in the iot's right so module 18 tells you about that correct mr krishna next we have cloud computing now everything is moving towards cloud the on premises is not so much popular cloud is more popular nowadays so in cloud computing we learn the risks of cloud azure and aws and everything that we have right gcp right so in cloud what are the different things that are there what are the risks of cloud how you can attack a cloud see world is going towards cloud that means we need more security in cloud yes or no before you were having on premises so you are you let's say you have uh, 12 devices connected to your switch right so you have your 12 devices connected to the switch that switch is not connected to the internet but now when we opted for cloud every single thing that we have every single thing that we are using everything is connected to the internet and if everything is connected to the internet and there is a network so there are more chances to get attacked so first we have to learn that what kind of attacks are there what attackers what kind of things that attackers are using nowadays right that is what that is 
we will learn in module 19 and then what we have we have cryptography now the last module we conclude with the cryptography that what we have whenever we send our data we cannot send our data in plain text right we never send it in the plain text even if you open your browser and you write www.example.com right any website you let's take so while you are writing it is getting encrypted in the back end right so that is what that is cryptography so we learn about hashing algorithms we learn about encryptions we learn about digital certificates digital signatures in the cryptography part that what is cryptography how what kind of security data security is there so these things we learn in this ch codes any questions any doubts anyone So you will provide us access to the lab also. We have VMware's right the virtualized environment. I will <laughs> give you some machines and in those machines we have to hack those machines, right? Okay. Right. So okay. the lab and everything is there. So for most of the modules there are labs, right? Some modules are like uh, some uh, you can say theory but most of the modules are for only practicals and theory as well okay thank you any other questions anyone great now let me tell you about the exam details that how the exam will be conducted first thing your exam will be conducted on the ec council exam center so there is uh, ec council's exam center so online you can take your exam and you have to register over there so all the steps will be provided to you now the code for exam is 31250 and 31215 view so you can take your exam in ECC exam as well or Pearson view as well it's it depends on you so mostly nowadays for uh, this particular online exam you can uh, you you can go for the ECC exam now the number of questions will be 125 so you will get 125 questions all questions will be theory right the test duration will be four hours so you have four hours for completing 125 questions without any negative marking right what kind of questions will be there there will be multiple choice questions now in multiple choice questions you will be asked that you will be given a scenario that let's say uh, Mr. Krishna is doing this kind of assessment and this is the output that he got what kind of scan that he did so that these are the things that you will uh, be having in the exam right so multiple choice questions you have to choose the most appropriate answer in that and for that you will be getting four hours right the passing rate for CH remains between 60 to 85 percent right so between 60 and 85 percent you will get passed now it depends on the set what you are what kind of set question set you are getting so ec council always tells that the passing percentage remains between 60 to 85 percent but right now if i tell you so out of 125 questions your 92 questions should be correct right so if out of 125 92 are correct you are then see you will get a ch certified right now one more thing that i want to share with you guys there is one more exam like as i told we will do practicals as well and this exam is only theory 
right so we have what this is only ceh that we will learn right ceh certified ethical hacker now ic council also provides ceh practical now in ch practical there will be 20 machines right so you will get 20 machines and you will get six hours to hack into them right so now you are getting six hours to complete them that is your ch practical exam so what at infosec train we have done we have combined the training of both of these right because when you will get the theory certificate and when you will get the practical certificate then you will be called ceh masters right so what we have done you don't have to go for the separate training for ch practical so we have practicals as well we have the theory as well so you can after the ch you you can go for the theory exam and after some uh, giving some time giving some practice you can go for ch practical as well right so that is the thing about ch masters clear everyone Yes, Mr. Divyang, the labs will be there. And Mr. Harshit, uh, exam, like if you have prepared for the exam, no exam is tough. So you just have to prepare. We will help you in preparing for the exam. We'll give you our best, right? So that is the thing. Clear, guys? Any other questions for me? It's clear. Great. Now the thing is, guys, the next thing we will learn about some of the things that we teach in CH. Now this is the phases of hacking, right? Now, according to different methodologies, there are different phases, but these remain these are the five phases in ch we also have five phases same and there is a organization with the name nest it has its own methodology uh, like uh, there is one more hackers methodology as well so there are different methodologies but we will take the c we'll go with the ch one but we'll tell you about the others as well that what kind of methodologies are there and what kind of things we learn over there now in this in these methodologies what we have the first one that we have is recon right so we discussed about reconnaissance right so this is information gathering basically right now the second phase is scanning so it is same scanning we do the scanning part over here now gaining access enumeration maintaining access now what was the fourth step what was the fourth module in ch in anyone remembers system hacking right And last one is covering your tracks, same. Now, let's move on with the first one that what is information gathering. Now in information gathering, what we do, we find out information about the organization, right? So we have the first one as reconnaissance, right? So in reconnaissance, we try try to find out the information, right? What information is available over the internet about any organization, 
so if i go for infosec so what kind of information is available over the internet for infosec so we have different tools shodan who is netcraft dns dumpster dns recon we have google docs as well huntio sublister amas right so these are the tools that we have right so let me show you one uh one or two things so if you can see my screen there is who is right so if you will go for who is lookup right and if i write over here let's say infosec train so see what kind of information you are getting that domain infosectrain.com the registrar you are getting godaddy and updated on status the name servers also you are getting the domain name servers right now you are also getting the email the email information technical contact the registry domain id right different information now if i same if i go for netcraft right and if you open netcraft so netcraft is another tool that helps us in getting the information right so if you can see the solutions and the services provided by netcraft different services right so if i write infosectrain.com and if you will search for it so you will get a site report so we'll go with the first one and click on here and it will give you the report about the website of infosec train guys right so now more information you are getting right that site title site rank right the domain the name server domain registrar right now you are also getting the ip addresses now yeah so for us we have this ip address for australia for india for uh, other place in india we have these ip addresses and you are also getting the operating systems that servers are using like it's using linux the web server is apache right so that is also what we are getting now web trackers and site technology what kind of technology is used so php is used xml ssl is used over there for the security javascript is also used jquery is also used lots of things mobile technology so click to call wordpress is also used right so different kinds of things you are getting so this is what information gathering is we try to find out more and more tools and we try to find out more and more information right so we'll tell you uh, that thing as well that from where you can get all the names of tools so if you don't remember the names of tools uh you don't need to worry because we'll tell you that from where you can just go to the, that place and you will get the tools right so that is the thing clear everyone any doubts so is it okay is it okay to see all the information like is it legitimate yeah like this is a legit is. site like you can that means you can find all the information yes. about you know any uh, okay yes this is a legit site if this would not be a legit site it for sex train must have sued them Right, right. Yeah, okay, great. Mm, hello, Ashish. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I have one uh, doubt actually. I forgot to clarify that. Uh, Miss, you had shown through various websites, uh, uh, like you had browsed and you had shown what all information we can get so uh isn't it a violation of data privacy of that particular organization that what all 
data it is uh, revealing through these websites and is it legally right that these uh, tools can uh, declare or they can help other users get these details of the organization servers that they are using see that is perfectly fine uh, and also this information is shared by the company only right because we have removed some information so they were uh, showing some more information so uh, like there are some companies so these websites were sh having more information about those so they were showing more information so some of the companies have removed most of the information so there is some information that is accepted that you can show like yeah like you can show these kinds of information from like what kind of os and what kind of web server they they are using so that kind of ex uh, information is acceptable over the internet right because some information is needed right because how we are getting like uh, in ch we have one more module cryptography so in that we learn about the digital certificates and digital signatures so there in digital uh, certificates we have a validation authorities so validation authorities have our whole data right so even our web browser have all the data right so that is the thing so some information is acceptable so we the information which cannot we think that cannot harm us so it's acceptable right Okay, and the reason why as like for example the version of the operating system what they're using which operating system they're using so suppose if uh, there is uh, any organization who is uh, not controls materials not updating their software so who uh, who might be uh, vulnerable so these are some information which uh, the black hats or the hackers who are uh, not ethical they might use to track those particular company servers and get into uh, those particular servers and harm those uh, this case might be possible if i'm not wrong yeah this case might be possible if there is no update in the software if there is no update and patches in the operating systems that a company is using but there is no company over there which do not upgrade themselves because every company even that company is big or small every company has a security team and that's why we are here right so security team does what security team always finds out, uh, they are working like every time finding out vulnerabilities so they are every time finding out vulnerabilities and they are exploiting them so they know that which thing can harm us or which thing cannot harm us right so that oh, is okay. the thing okay, okay thank you Ashish okay so this is about the first one right now next we have network scanning now in network scanning what we do we find out the open ports and the services running in a target website or machine right so the basic agenda of r is to find out the open ports and services running right now how will we do that we'll do that using a tool with the name nmap right so does anyone knows what is nmap Uh, <clears throat> network mapper it is scan the entire uh, operating system network as mapper. well entire uh, the uh, scanning of entire network which ports are open or closed what is the os is running and all any other tool apart from in map uh, we have verb suite we have uh, net sparker then <laughs> Uh, Nessus also. Nessus, Nessus also. Nessus. Yeah. Nessus. Do we have open VAS?
Yes. What you said? Open what? Open valve. Uh, no, I haven't heard of. I think sir, open valve is a uh, VPN network, right? It's also a vulnerability assessment tool. Uh, okay, okay, got it. So it's a vulnerability scanner as well, right? So these are the tools that we can use. There are uh, many tools, but basically we use in map and Nisus, right? So now let me tell you that how these things work. Now what we have guys. We have this machine like this is my Kali Linux and this is a machine. So it says localhost login if you can see in the last line and we don't know the username and password. Now this is a kind of machine a CTF machine. Capture the flag. So what you will have to do in this machine you have to find out a flag. Now what is a flag? A flag is a thing that is a text file or any kind of file that is hidden inside the machine so that it will be a proof that you got inside the machine you made a connection with the machine right so you will get points for that so i will be sharing the link of this machine as well so you guys can uh, in your free time you guys can like use this machine and do all the things right so this is how my kali linux looks like now the fourth thing that we have to do we have to find the IP of this particular machine. Then we have to scan. Now let me tell you how the scanning works, right? So everyone can see my screen. Yes. Okay, great. So the thing that we have is scanning. Now scanning happens in three steps. Yeah. Now those three steps are the first one. Check whether the host is live or not. Second, scan for open ports. The third one is services running. Now, the first one is check whether the host is live or not. So, how you can find out if any target or any website is up and running or not how we can check that can we use ping yeah we can ping it we can ping it okay what else can we do if we know the url we can directly yes, this is the general check that we used to do or okay. tell it Trace out. Can we use that? Trace root, which we call. Can we use that? Trace out in Windows. Trace root in Linux. Yeah. Can we use that? Yeah. It will also tell you the host. Yes, sir, can we? Can we? Hello. Uh, can we use the trace root and trace it? In Linux, trace root is the command for Linux. Trace cert is for Windows. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, what else can we use? Now, let me open the machine again, and the name of the machine I don't know, but it's written. It's written ch bootcamp. So if I write ping ch and bootcamp, am I able to ping it? No, it's not giving me anything. Right? So that is the thing. That means we need an IP address for that. So how will I 
find out the IP address. I can find out the IP address using app scan. I I config. I, yeah, that is if config will give the IP address of my Kali Linux machine. I'm trying to find out the IP address of my target machine. Oh, OK, right. So app scan will help over there. What is our address resolution protocol? Which does what? What is the work of address resolution protocol guys? Anyone who can tell me. It can find the MAC address as well as uh, I think IP address. It, uh, where it uh, came from uh, IP address and MAC address. Correct. So what it does, it resolves the IP to a MAC address. So it will find out the IP, then it will find out the MAC address of that particular machine. So what we can do, we can go here and we can write first thing we'll write if config this will give me the ip of my kali linux machine the attacking machine my attacking machine is 192.168.88.140 right now what i have to do i will scan my whole subnet subnet means a small part of a network right so what my subnet is i will write up scan 192.168.88 dot zero so starting from dot zero till dot 255 it will do what it will ping every ip address for sharing the mac address and whatever ip address will give the reply back it will give it give that ip address in the result right now slash 24 is the subnet mask as you can see 255.255.255.0 right so this is what this is the subnet mask. And what is subnet mask? Subnet mask separates the network bits and the host bits. So what you can see the network bits that you can see these are the network bits and the zero that you can see these are the hosts that how many hosts we can add how many devices we can add into this network, right? So now if I will press enter. Is it giving me anything? It's giving me three things only. Now what are these three things? Can anyone tell me? IP my MAC address. Yeah, but and first uh, IPs, and... IPs of what things? Your system and which are which are open and you know currently active. Yeah. I think one is your uh, uh, 88.1 and two are the open IPs currently which is running in in uh, specific pool 88.0 slash 24 to up to 225 and 254 is your gateway IP. Okay. That's 254 my gateway. Yes, gateway IP, I think. Yeah. So let me tell you. Dot one is what? Dot one is my network ID. Now this net, this is the network ID for my VMware, right? Because my Windows is there as the base, and then inside Windows my VMware is there. So dot one is what? Dot one is the network ID for my VMware. Dot 254 is the broadcast ID for the VMware. Right? And dot two, dot two is what dot two is my gateway. So where is that particular IP? Now I'm getting because that machine was not uh, up and running. Now it's up and running. So it gave me the IP of my target machine as well, which is 145. Right, so network ID, broadcast ID, gateway, and this is what this is your 
target machine's IP. So the IP of this machine, ch boot camp, is this, right? Now I got the IP and I found that my target is up and running, right? So after that, what I have to do, right? Scan for open ports, right? So for scanning open ports, what I can use, what tool? Nmap. Correct. So I can use Nmap or I can use Nesis, right? Same like that for services running, I can use Nmap, I can use Nesis, right? Now, if we talk about Nmap, guys, what happens in Nmap? First, let me tell you about the options that you can use with the Nmap because Nmap is like everywhere it's Nmap and Nmap. So Nmap stands for Network Mapper. Now it is a scanning tool that we use to scan the network. Now in this, what we have, we have different options. So options we can use with and map right so what options i can use the first option hyphen v now hyphen v options is for verbosity if you want more verbose output more detailed output you will use hyphen v then we have hyphen n right now when you will learn about the working of n map so in working of nmap it does what it does dns resolution right so for blocking dns resolution we have hyphen n hyphen pn hyphen pn is for blocking ping sweep right so what nmap does when nmap starts it pings every ip address in the subnet right and it tries to find out that if the target machine is up and running or not but using app can we found that my target machine is up and running and i also found that the ip address of tar my target machine is this 192.168.88.145 right so that is the thing right so that's why we are blocking that ping sweep so that it can save our time right okay now hyphen pn after that what we can use hyphen p hyphen p is for specifying port so let's say you want to specify any specific port let's say you will write port hyphen p80 right because you want to go for port 80 only or port 84 yeah so that is the thing now next thing that we have is hyphen p hyphen now hyphen p hyphen is what guys hyphen p hyphen is for scanning, scanning all ports now how many ports are there in total zero to six five three uh, six double five three five Correct. Zero two six five five three five, which makes yes. it a total of six five five three six ports. Yes. Now Nmap only scans six five five three five ports. Right. Yes. And why it does not scan port zero? Okay, that is a task for you guys. You, you have to tell me why it does not scan port zero. Because it is okay. reserved for TCP IP networking. Correct. It's a reserved port. Find out more information about that. Now, have, after hyphen P hyphen, we can use hyphen SC for running 
well known scripts right you can use hyphen sv for finding out service versions now well known scripts what are those well known scripts guys if i tell you our linux has some scripts related to every service right so if you want to have found find out any vulnerability inside any machine and you think that this machine like you will start from the scratch only so you will find out any vulnerability which will which was before there right Bef uh, which was the well-known vulnerability for that like if there is any well-known exploit for it so let's say we have http right everyone knows http yes now in http protocol correct so for http we have some well-known exploits so we try to find out if my target is having any well-known vulnerability any vulnerability that was not patched before so what we can do we can write like this so if i tell you these are the scripts right inside nmap we have scripts so xamp for xamp we have scripts right ssl snmp smtp smb right for everything we have the scripts right now all the things that you can see like for kerberos we also have ldap we also have the scripts the vulnerable scripts for http so the, this is the thing now if you want to find out like you might be wondering that how many scripts are these in total so let me show you the number 606 scripts are there in total inside in map now if, if you want to find out let's say you want to find out any script that is for only http so you just write grip http any script with the name http will be in front of you so these are only scripts for http so it gave you the output right so these scripts are run by nse nmap scripting engine right so in nmap you have a scripting engine it automatically runs the script if you will use hyphen sc option guys right right now this is for service version you can also use hyphen o for finding out operating system version right you can use these options as well now in nmap we have different kind of scans right so nmap does a different kind of scan that what kind of scan you need you want so what we have guys we have this thing this nmap now the first scan in map that we can we talk about is full connect scan now in this what happens the client sends a sin request syn synchronization request the server replies back with an act synchronization and acknowledgement right and then client sends acknowledgement this thing is also called three-way handshake right now this is the legal way whenever you send something to someone let's say i'm sending something to you so first our machines have done three-way handshake this is a kind of saying hello for this is a kind of greeting in the machines that how i'm greeting you that hi everyone this is ashish dhani and today we'll be here for learning these kinds of things so how are you all and these kinds of things so same like that client is saying hello to the server that hello mr server can i connect with you and the server is replying back hello man and can you yeah you can connect with me can i also connect with you and client is saying yes you can connect with me and both are connected with each other right so this is the scan that we can do 
now for this we use the option and map hyphen s right right so the option for this is in map hyphen st now next thing that we have is stealth scan now stealth scan is what rather than sending like let's say attacker is sending send request to the target so what we learned in the first one the three-way handshake that we have to reply with the synac so attacker sends this thing right send request the target replies synac right now attacker closes the connection now why attacker is closing the connection because the attacker got to know that yes if i'm sending a packet using port number 80 so the target is replying back right now if the target is replying back that means the port is open right so that is how still scan is done and you can use it like this hyphen ss right next we have fin scan so fin scan means we are sending a fin package right so fin is also a packet related to tcp flags right so if i'm sending a fin packet and i'm getting no response from the server or the target that means the port is open because if i am telling you something right now you guys are listening you guys are not every time saying yes yes and yes but you guys are listening that means your port is open yeah we can say that right so if you are not getting a response that does not mean the port is closed that means port is open but why this thing is not replying because fin is not a legal way to start a communication we always need sin flag right so whenever you start a communication so that communication always starts with sin right that is how you are conversation starts now if we are sending fin request to the server the server is thinking that yeah who is this person how is trying to connect to me uh, what kind of connection because fin we use fin flag to close the connection now the target is thinking that what kind of connection this guy is trying to close if he has no connection with me so that's why it's not replying so that means the port is open now we also have null scan right so we can use hyphen sn for that for fin scan hyphen sf we can use and this we are not sending any of the flag and we are not getting any response right so that means null scan we are doing right so that is what that is also a kind of scan next we have xmas scan so for xmas scan what we have we have hyphen s x now hyphen s x is what uh, when you will write hyphen s x with in map so it will send pin push and urgent flag to the target now as i told only sin is the legal way of starting a communication pin push urgent any other flag you send that is not a way of starting the conversation right so if we are even sending fin push and urgent the destination will not reply back and that is what that tells you if there is no response the port is open right now what if the port is closed guys what will happen when the port is closed So if the port is closed, you can see over here, you will get a reset and acknowledgement. 
reset act will be the reply so any flag you will send and you are getting reset act that means the port is closed right so let's get back to our machine and let's see what ports are open in our machine so i got the ip address of my machine let me first check if it is like up and running so you can just try to ping it 192.168 and yeah it's up and running now what we can do we have to write the nmap command so what i'll write i can write nmap hyphen s s v c so let me simplify this hyphen s s hyphen p hyphen n hyphen p n hyphen n hyphen v we are using we want to scan all the ports hyphen v hyphen right so these are the options that we can use with it yeah now we can also we have to also find out the service version and we have to also run the well-known scripts right for every port that is open for every service that is running so this is how our command will look like now after that i have to write the ip address 192.168.88.145 this is the ip address of my target machine now what what flag will be sent to my target machine in every port look at the command and let me know that what kind what flag will be sent okay mr lalit says send flag how many of you guys agree with mr lalit Uh, tcp half scan tcp half scan will it yeah it will do half scan by looking at ss but will it send the sin flag yes or no first will my kali linux send the sin flag so let's see what ports are open So it does running the scripts. So let's wait for it and let's see what kind of things it has. Any questions, anyone want to ask anything? Now you got the thing, you got the output. Now whole long output we are getting. Let's see what it did and how it started. So it says starting in map NAC, as I told you, in map scripting engine. So it loaded 155 scripts out of 606 for scanning. And it loaded only those scripts which are there for uh, the open ports, right? So it did the up scan then initiating since still scan right after that it told us that discovered these ports open so these are the ports that are open right now then it told us that scanning seven services so seven ports are open so it will be scanning and running all the vulnerable scripts for them now as you can see it says port 
that means port number 21 is open and service is FTP and the version of FTP is running VS FTP D right same like that we have port number 22 open SSH port number 80 open HTTP and the version of HTTP Apache HTTP D right port 9090 TCP open HTTP is running and cockpit web service 161 right one triple three seven it's open but the service is unknown right i ask this triple two double two ssh sorry for the interest i have now yes Hello? mr vikram yes mr vikram please yeah actually under 22 port it is showing some script okay. execution saying that use hyphen t to d yeah. so what is that which one and then 22 TCP open SSH. Yeah, so this is just an error. Script execution failed. So what we have, as I showed you the script, right? Uh, for SSH, we have scripts. Now in these scripts, what scripts it ran? It tried to run some scripts, right? So SSH host key, right? So if there is any error, so this is the script SSH host key, right? So it was trying to do what it was trying to run a default SSH key with that, but it was not the username and password, right? So that's why it's giving you the error, right? So what SSH or nmap does, nmap does not run all these scripts. Out of all these scripts for every service, it picks up the well-known script and then runs it right so it picked up this particular script and it was not giving the output it was not able to run this script on the particular machine right so that's why it is saying error right yeah okay so, so if this script is not applied on every machine yeah sorry please. okay Actually, Ashish, if uh, when we are executing this NMAP, okay. if we didn't give any port number, and if I'm executing some uh, profile type called slow compliance scan, mm -hmm. whether it will be executed or six double fault TCP and UDP ports. Sorry, can you repeat your question from the start? Right. So, actually, in the NMAP UI, I have seen that some uh, slow comprehensive scan. So, oh. if I execute the scan, whether it be scanned for all six double five three five ports or only three ports. See, this will uh, be the scan for all the six five five three five ports because I have used hyphen p hyphen. And if you remember that we used, we learned that hyphen p is for specifying a port, hyphen p hyphen is for scanning all six five five three five ports. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so we have used hyphen p hyphen, so that means it is scanning all the six by five three five ports. Yeah, okay. Sure. Thank you, thank you. Okay, great. So in, now, actually, in uh, uh, Ashish, uh, in script, randomly it will uh, use only one script, one script or uh, all script. It will not randomly pick up the script. It will pick up the well-known script. Okay. okay right what i have written a hyphen sc is for running well-known script so the most well-known script will be run over here so for ssh the well-known script is this right ssh host key so for every ssh for every machine it will run this right ssh host key it will try out ssh host key for every machine right now it depends if it works on any ssh host key or it does not works on any ssh host key right so it depends on machine to machine whether it will work like i'm trying out password like we are uh, around 40 members over here and i'm trying out the password admin and username as admin and password as admin so for some peoples it will not work for but for some peoples around uh, like my neighbor or any place where i'm trying it for some people it will work because they have not changed the password 
right same like that this ssh host key script is working for some machines it will not be working for some machines right that's the thing guys now as i told you guys this machine is what this machine is a ctf challenge capture the flag so you have to capture the flags over here and get the points so over here as you can see port 1337 there is a flag they found my backdoor morty and you got 10 points right so this is we have captured one flag now for the next thing what we can do what will be our next step how to find out any other flag so if you will see that uh port number 21 read the output and let me know how i can find out flag and if there is any flag in this particular ftp Is there any flag present in port 21? Plain text traffic, okay. Yeah, the traffic is plain text, but how can I find any flag in there? The answer is in front of you guys. FTP not been allowed. Correct. So it says anonymous FTP login allowed. That means anyone can log in to this machine using the FTP port, and that will be only with the name anonymous. So I have here, I'll go here. Now, how you will connect? Just write FTP and write the IP address of your target machine. Press enter. It will ask for the name. So anonymous will write. The password will also be anonymous. And it says login successful. If I do ls for listing what is in there, it says flag.txt. Now, how can I download this flag.txt to my machine only? This is in the target machine. I want to download it to my Kali Linux. So, how can I do that? Anyone knows this? Uh, through get command correct so we'll write get flag dot txt and it says transfer complete so let's exit this and do the ls in my machine so as you can see flag dot txt is here so for finding out the flag what you have to write if you want to read what is written inside any file what command you will you use sir cat command Cat. We are cat. Right. cat flag dot txt and it says whoa this is an expected 10 more points to you right so there what is the ten points number what is the use of that 10 points sorry what is the 10 points what is the use of that see for getting the root of this machine so let's uh, this is what this is called a ctf challenge capture the flag so in this kind of challenge what you have to do you have to collect all the points that are there in the total right so you will collect the points and when uh, using different techniques so that means that you have learned all the uh, all those techniques because you got all the points right so now you got the you learn the technique of ftp that how using ftp you can get inside a machine if ftp login is allowed how you can download that thing and now how you can see that thing in your machine so 10 points for learning that yeah okay 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 great 
now what else can we do guys can anyone tell me how we can find out other points so as you can see port number a b is open sorry how to get assistance version f assistance version what is open assistance version can get right Open SSH version. Open SSH version, it's not telling. Yeah. So that we can get right. Can't get. Yeah, we'll try that. Uh, like you guys can try that as well. So let me show you first thing what you have to do. First, you got FTP. That's good. SSH needs usernames and password. We don't have any username and password right now. We have port number 80 open. So why don't we go to the web and write the IP of our target machine so that we can find anything over there. Right. So I can write 192.168.80. Right. And when I press the enter, let's see what it gives. Unable to connect. Let's try it one more time. No, so it's not able to establish a connection. Now we have to find out something else. Right. So what we can do, we have other ports open as well. Right now, what are those ports like we have port number 9090. Yeah. Can we use that? Yes, Mr. Taur Rahman, we can do that if it is allowed, if no security controls are there. Yeah. Now, if port number 9090 is open and HTTP is running, let's try out this thing. What it give? So let's write the IP address of the target machine colon 9090. Yeah. Let's see if it gives us anything. OK, it's also not giving anything. Now what we can do. How to find out more flags. Any idea anyone? Okay. Let me tell you. Anyone any suggestions if you want to give? It has a trace method also. HTTP. Okay. Okay, let me try that again. So now it's giving me the output. Now it says Morty School website. It no, it's not finished yet. Okay, stop judging me. It's not giving me anything, but we tried port number 9090 and accept the risk. 
now it says flag there is a flag there is no zeus in your pace 10 points you got another flag yep 10 more points for you now next thing that you can see there is sport number 60000 open and now what we can do we can try to create a direct connection with that port 60000 right so there is a tool netcat and we can use this particular tool for creating the connection it says welcome to rick's half baked half baked river shell if i do ls over here it says flag.txt if i write cat flag.txt flick the pickle morty 10 more points for you right you got 10 more points so this is the new flag that we got clear guys any doubts okay now one more flag i'm showing you guys but after that i will be sharing the link of this and you guys have to just find out what uh if there are any other flags so i'll write dub for directories directory listing right now 192.168.88.145 if i do that let's see what it gives okay so in directory listing i got password directory there's a directory with the name slash passwords let's copy it and paste it in the browser let's see what it has it has a flag flag.txt double click on it yeah just don't do it 10 more points you got right now apart from that you have password.html nothing is here right it's just a loop or uh, like a rabbit hole right so this is how your approach will be in finding out the flags and also solving the machine so in this what you learned that how you did all the things so you did the scanning after scanning you got what you got a flag after that when you did ftp guys remember you be connected using ftp so that is what that is called enumeration right so we enumerated we communicated with the target and we tried to find out if there is any information right so that is what that is enumeration right trying to find out any details more details about the target so we communicated we tried to find out if there is something else re related to that particular thing right after enumeration what we have we have the next step system hacking yeah so in system hacking what we do if there is any other machine so we try to find out any exploit for that right so what we have we have exploit database online present as well so you can uh, download the exploits from the exploit database let me show you So this is the exploit database there are lots and lots of exploits present for everything so you just have to write the name of the exploit and you will get an exploit the service that is running you want to exploit and you will get the exploit for it right so this in system hacking if we are not able like we created connections we found the flag on uh, you on the website and all if we are not able to do that 
then we use the exploit to exploit any services right so that is system hacking after that you have cover the track the last step now cover the tracks tells you guys that what you have you got inside a machine now attackers got inside the machine so what attackers will do they will copy the data or whatever data they want they will capture that data or delete the data from the machine or the organization now after that in the organizations there are forensics investigators as well so they do the forensics and they find out the things inside the machine and they uh, like they clear all the logs so whenever you do anything inside your machine a log is created over there right so by that log this forensics teams and the peoples can find out information that who did it right who did the attack right for that you have to clear all the tracks right so you have to delete everything that is there 